Hey, we're back, and I promised you a bunch of great recipes for your next little get-together, and they're coming. Really, they are. Like grilled chicken breast with gorgonzola cheese sauce and a goat cheese dip that sounds out of this world. It sounds like the perfect appetizer. But right now, what about making homemade oven mitts to, you know, use when you're entertaining? These are so cute, and the, the ladies at Ju Julie Sewing Center uh, in Ashwaubenon are going to show us. Good morning, Amy. With the summer season upon us, a lot of us are doing grilling outdoors. And one of the things that we really need is a hot mitt. And that's what I'm going to show you how to make today. Uh, the pattern is uh, quick kitchen um, gifts. And their pattern is very well illustrated, which I like. One of the things we need to start with, because we're going to be handling something very, very hot, is something called Insulbrite. Insulbrite is a fabric that has a layer of, oh, it almost looks like aluminum foil inside. What it does is it reflects the heat back to its surface. It can come with, or come in either a package like this, or you can also buy it on the bolt. But this is what you want. It really, really is great. What I do, because I do so many projects that use the Insulbrite, you use it as is, or usually you add some cotton batting. And you want to use cotton batting rather than the polyester. So what I do is I will buy a yard or two, and I will add my batting right away and just do quick stitching just to hold the layers together. That way, when I'm actually doing my project, I don't have to worry about four layers being held together. Because the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to lay your fabric over your insulbrite and your batting and then do some cross hatching. Or you can just do stippling, anything to hold your fabric together. And here I did cross hatching and what I used was the painter's tape and just ran it up and down, which is really, really fast. Once you have that stitched together, then you take your pattern. Now, my pattern looks, might look a little bit green. What I do is um, I line my patterns. If it's a pattern I'm going to use a lot, I will put a fusible interfacing on the pattern so that I can use it over and over and over again and it doesn't tear. So that's what I've done here. You would lay your pattern on your fabric that has been cross-hatched and cut it out. For this pattern, you need two. One for this side, and then you flip your pattern over, and you have one for the other side. You want to make sure that the fabric, your fashion fabric, is actually facing the side that has the metallic or the, the shiny part of the insulbrite. Otherwise, it will not be reflecting the heat back to its source. Once you have this cut out, then you're going to sew this together, which is what I've done here. I've run a quarter inch seam all the way around, and I have reinforced the part right here where the, where the thumb uh, is, because that's where you're going to be getting a lot of uh, extra stress. I've also taken the time to go through and cut away some of the batting in here, because that's going to be very difficult when you turn it around. You also do the clipping, and just take your scissors, clip to your stitching, but not through, so that when you turn it, and it's important to do that here too, so that when you turn it around, you'll get a nice, smooth turn. The next thing that you need to do is to make the top part of your mitt. For that, you do not have to use the Insulbrite. If you want to, you can. I don't, um, because this does come up quite a ways on your arm, but you certainly can. It's one layer of fabric, one layer of cotton batting, and once again, I've cross-hatched. I have cut this out from my pattern, and here the notches are very important. I know a lot of times when we're sewing a garment, we kind of mark the notches with just a little mark of a tailor's chalk or something like that, but here it is important to actually have the ears or the, the um, markings for you. Now what you're going to do with this, this is all ready to go. We've already stitched this. But what we need to do here is put right sides together. And I'm going to stitch 
a quarter inch seam. Once you have your seam sewn here, what you're going to do is set this inside with right sides together inside your mitt that you've gotten done. And when you do this, this part where you have the notch is supposed to go with your side seam. Now, I'm ready. now what we need to do that we've got this put inside here and we've got it pinned. There's no other way except to pin it. We're going to stitch around here. You can stitch around here like this, but most machines have what we call a free arm. And you can take off your accessory tray. You then can fit your project underneath here. And once again, you're sewing through a lot of a lot of thicknesses, but it really does work. Once you have this stitched around, the next thing you're going to do is turn this all out, right side out. And I've already got this one pulled around so that it is right side out. This is what it's going to look like. The hardest part probably is making sure that these areas are nice and round. And if you've done clipping really good, you can just take something, not scissors please, not something that's pointed, but just something that you can help just shape this so that it looks like it should look. Then this is what you've got. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold this down. And you fold it so that, and, and you have to just feel this, you fold it so that the raw edge is just below your stitching line. Then you would put this back on your machine and just stitch right along the stitching line. And that would hold both the raw edge and that part of your cuff together. So this is the pattern, Quick Kitchen Gifts, and these are some of the samples of some of the hot mitts that you can make. You can make them to fit any decor that you like.